Hi friends, let's dive into five papers that just came out this week. Here is an overview. Reddit improves REC systems by fine-tuning both the language model and the retriever. Fresh LLM uses retrieved information from a search engine, Google Search, to keep up to date with the current information in the world. Analogical prompting automatically guides the reasoning process of large language models to improve the chain of thought process. There are two significant papers published on model understanding this week that are crucial in AI transparency and safety. I find them super incredible and mind-blowing. Representation Engineering proposed a new approach to understand the language model and more impressively to manipulate and control the model. Another paper presented a similar approach, suggesting that language models can be decomposed into features that are understandable. I'm going to walk through each of the papers. Keep watching if you're interested. First, let's dive into this Reddit paper. As we all know that building a retrieval augmented system to understand information from external data has been super, super popular nowadays. However, there are lots of performance issues with REC systems like not be able to retrieve relevant information or not be able to generate relevant results. This paper introduced a lightweight fine-tuning methodology to fine-tune a pre-trained large language model to better use retrieved information and fine-tune the retriever to retrieve more relevant results. So how does it fine-tune a language model? The idea is pretty simple just to add the retrieved information as background in the input instruction data. Given a selected dataset DL, we separate each fine-tuning sequence into instruction X and output Y, and then for each example, we retrieve top K relevant text chunks based on X. And then for each of the K text chunks, we simply prepending the text chunks to the instruction as a background field. So now we have k fine-tuning instances per original result. The goal is to minimize this loss function of the negative log likelihood of the output given the combination of the retrieved text chunk and the original instruction. So at this point, you may wonder not all retrieved text chunks are actually relevant. How does it work? So that's exactly the point it will help large language model to use relevant background information to make a prediction and also train the large language model to make correct predictions when a wrong retrieved chunk is given. This will enable the LOM to ignore misleading retrieved content. I have to say that this sounds pretty smart. The second fine tuning step is to fine tune a retriever, which uses a dragon plus dual encoder model. The goal is to train the retriever to assign higher scores to chunks that can improve the LM's likelihood of generating the correct answer. We're minimizing the KL divergence between two scores here. The first score is the retriever score. You're probably familiar with this. Basically, we calculate the dot product of the text chunk embeddings and the query embedding and normalize it among K retrieved chunks. The second LSR score is basically the normalized probability of the output given the text chunk and input, regulated by a temperature hyperparameter. And in practice, they only update the query encoder of the retriever. Results showed that this Reddit method significantly outperforms other models. Jerry Liu from Lama Index implemented the first fine-tuning step of this paper. For each question response pair, they fetch the top K text chunks context from a retriever and create K question context response pair. Split into training and validation sets, fine tune the model, and evaluate the results. The next paper, Fresh LLM, is using RAG with a search engine results to answer questions about the current world because pre-trained models don't really have the most up-to-date information. There are two main parts of this paper. First is Fresh QA, a dynamic QA benchmark. Second is fresh prompt, a fuchsia learning prompting methods with up-to-date information retrieved from a search engine. Let's take a look at this dynamic fresh QA data. There are four main categories of questions they created, never changing, slow changing, fast changing, and false premise. And there are two difficult levels. One hop questions are explicit and straightforward, 
multi-hop questions require one or more additional steps or reasoning, there are two modes of evaluations. The relaxed mode focuses on the correctness of the answer. The strict mode checks whether all facts are accurate. Looking at the various LLMs, they found that LLMs struggle with questions about current information, especially questions with false premises. They also found that chain of thought increases hallucination. This is really important because we all know that chain of thought is very helpful in answering complex questions, but apparently it can also introduce more room for hallucination. And the multi-hop reasoning is challenging for several models, but GPT-4 is pretty good at it. Okay, so how do they do this search engine prompting exactly? They retrieve the search results, including answer box, organic search, knowledge graph, related questions. They extract all those text snippets and other information like source, date, title, highlighted words, and then created a list of K retrieved evidences. They sort the evidence from oldest to newest because previous research indicated that things in the, in the middle get lost. Okay, so this is what fresh prompt looks like. We have a query and then retrieved information from Google. And then the language model is able to use the most up-to-date information to answer questions correctly. The final result suggests GPT-4 plus fresh prompt outperforms other models. One other thing I found interesting is that they found that adding this sentence, please check if the question contains a valid premise before answering, improves the accuracy on false premise questions, but can actually hurt accuracy on valid premise questions. This is kind of strange in telling me that GPT-4 is very sensitive to prompting. This paper, LLM as Analogical Reasoners, aim to improve the chain of thought prompting by automatically guiding the reasoning process of large language models. The background is that the existing chain of thought paradigm faces two challenges, providing relevant guidance or exemplars of reasoning and minimizing the need for manual labeling. Specifically, the zero-shot generic guidance of reasoning only uses the phrase like think step by step. This can't really handle complex tasks. The few-shot chain of thought needs labeled examples, which is a lot of work. The analogical prompting proposed in this paper prompts large language models to self-generate relevant exemplars before solve the problem. There are two techniques described in the paper. One is the self-generated exemplars. Another is the self-generated knowledge plus exemplars. Here is the instruction for the self-generated exemplars. Recall three relevant and distinct problems. For each problem, describe it and explain the solution. And then solve the initial problem. Three to five exemplars work the best. Here is a concrete example where in the prompt we have a math problem. In the instruction, we ask the language model to recall three examples that are relevant and also distinct with this format. Then we ask the language model to solve the initial problem. The second technique is to generate knowledge first. Here is the additional instruction we add in the prompt. Identify core concepts in the problem and provide a tutorial. This generated knowledge will help large language models to generate exemplars that align more closely in terms of the fundamental problem-solving approaches. Again, here's an example. We have a coding problem. We ask the language model to identify the core concept or algorithm used to solve the problem. Write a tutorial about these algorithms, and then we ask it to provide three examples and solve the original problem. The paper found that the self-generated exemplars outperforms zero-shot and five-shot chain of thought, and the self-generated knowledge plus exemplars really help with the code generation task. They also compared with the retrieved chain of thought method. They found that their method outperforms the retrieved chain of thought with larger scale large language models. This is likely because the language model has already learned related tasks during training and then can generate useful exemplars. But with smaller scale large language models, the retrieved chain of thought performs better.
and the self-generation fails to produce useful or valid exemplars. Overall, I think it's a pretty straightforward and easy to implement technique. It's probably worth a try. This next paper, Representation Engineering, is probably the most mind-blowing paper I have read recently. Be able to control a language model is just crazy. Okay, let's take a look at this paper. There are two general views on AI interpretability. The first is the Sherringtonian view, centered around mechanical interpretability, focusing on understanding neural networks in terms of neurons and circuits. The second view is the Hopfieldian view, focusing on higher level cognition through representational spaces, which are the patterns of activity across populations of neurons. This paper aligns with the representational view and proposed representation engineering to understand and control the inner works of neural networks. There are two main areas of representation engineering. One is to understand the neural network, they call it reading. The second area is controlling the neural network. Control. To understand the neural network, they seek to find representations for higher level concepts and functions within a network. Concepts are things like truthfulness, utility, probability, morality, and emotion. Functions are processes like lying and power seeking. They make this distinction because the process of handling concepts and functions later are a little different. Okay, now let's go to the first question. How do we understand the neural network? They proposed this method, LAT, linear artificial tomography, with three steps. Step one is to design stimulus and task. Here is the template for capturing concepts. For example, to capture the concepts of truthfulness, you might ask, consider the amount of truthfulness in the following answer and then you provide some question answering data here and then ask the amount of truthfulness in the answer. So this is a prompt you would use to input to your large language model. And then here is the template for capturing functions. For example, to capture functions like honesty, you can use this prompt. Pretend you are an honest or a dishonest person making statement about the world. Step two is to collect neural activity. For extracting concept, we use the last token representation, whatever the model outputs the amount of truthfulness is. For extracting functions like honesty, we collect representations from each token in model's response because here the language model is going to give us a paragraph of answer. Step three is to construct a linear model. So you have a set of stimuli feeding to the template in step one, collect the neural activity in step two, and now you should have a bunch of representations for a given concept or function. Now you can do a PCA and use the first principal component as the reading vector, which represents the underlying concept or function. You can find the detailed implementation in the appendix. There are some peering, normalization, and other details I'm not going into right now. So that's basically how we understand the model. Now the question is, how do we control the model? This paper is using this low rank representation adaptation to fine tune low rank adapter metrics with the loss function applied to representations. There are a lot of important applications of this representation engineering. For example, to detect lies, to manipulate models honesty, to make it more honest or less honest, to detect immoral and power seeking tendencies, to manipulate models immoral and power seeking tendencies, manipulate a model's emotion, sensitivity to harmness, increase a model's fairness, do fact editing, increase or suppress the model's tendency to generate text related to a concept like dogs. And there could be more examples and use cases like this. This research is so important that it can potentially help ensure that future AI systems are trustworthy and safe. The final paper we have today is very similar to the previous one we just read. We're looking at a blog post right now, but there's also a paper version of this blog post if you're interested. Just like the previous paper, this one also mentioned that we can't really interpret individual neurons because they're activated in many contexts and mean different things in different contexts. Researchers decomposed group of neurons into interpretable features, which are patterns of neuron activations. 
In a transformer language model, they composed a layer of 512 neurons into more than 4,000 features like legal language, DNA sequence, HTTP requests, and more. They used human evaluators and a large language model to validate that the features are more interpretable than neurons. They also found that artificially activating a feature can cause model behavior to change in a different way. This is very similar to the model control and the manipulation we see in the previous paper. They found that the features that are learned are largely universal between different models. The interpretable features will eventually help us monitor and steer model behavior, improve the safety and reliability. So I think both this research and the previous research are really, really important work that people should know about. Okay, so that's it for today's video. This is the first time I'm doing a video featuring just AI papers. Please let me know what you think, if you like it or find it useful, and if I should continue making videos like this. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.